It don't get a much more classic congruent ICT and cranium than this, okay? This is classic. And everything is congruent. So sphenoid is rotated to the left. The left eye is back. You can see her mandible a little bit off to the left and kind of the shortening of her face on that side. And when everything adapts to that and the, the cranium is, is the driver, often the clavicle will be higher on that side, all right? Because there's a pull from the sternocleidomastoid, you'll see these pictures tomorrow, that, that pull this up, okay? And her second ring is rotated, but that's not the big part of it. Okay, Michelle, come do that beautiful correction. No, I don't remember. Did you do I it? No, right. No, she okay. did. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Kirsten, so watch the change now. Because people actually don't believe okay. that the eye position can change, the orbit can change. So if you look at the size of Miriam's eyelids, you'll see the eyelids come to a, there we go come to a, a more equal size as her sphenoid derotates. This is a congruent rotation. So Kirsten's not changing the sphenoid; she's only changing the temporal bones and then release. So this is a left ICT and we were troubleshooting right rotation. So we meant immediately to the things in her neck and thorax that were rotated to the left because they had the greatest possibility to limit right rotation. No correction of anything rotated to the left made a difference. But she has a left ICT. So take out the left ICT, correct the left ICT, Kristen. Oh, first of all, um, hands off. Turn your head to the right for me, Miriam, and then come back. And uh, Kirsten, place your hands on her clavicle. Slowly turn your head to the right. Watch Kirsten's index fingers. See how there's medial translation happening? So the clavicle is hijacking that manubrium with right rotation. As she turns her head to the right, they're both gliding in. And now all our ability to breathe here, to move the manubrium, et cetera, will be, will be compromised, okay? Correct the cranium. Clavicle correction didn't make a difference to right rotation. So as she corrects the cranium, I can feel this left clavicle drop down and broaden. And now she turns her head. And what, look at the line here. Turn her head, turn your head to the right. So there's still a little bit of a medial pull up on this side, but the amplitude or the range of the rotation, did stay there, stay there. Go again, keep the correction. There's R1, there's R1. Come back, slowly come off. Vroom twist, let the eye go back, turn your head to the right, there's R1. Mm. Okay, so she's gained, I don't know, 25, 30% mm -hmm. of her, her range of rotation. And when Kirsten let the cranium go, the first vector she felt was a short vector between her occiput temporal bone on the right mm -hmm. and her upper neck. So you would actually go and do a cranium CV analysis for vector analysis for Miriam. Okay? Thanks, Mark.